I'm important, okay? I am the world cruiserweight champion. I am the greatest wrestler. Not only because I'm Alex Wright, because I'm from Germany. Okay, guys, joining the Outsiders podcast right now, all the way from Germany, we have Alex Wright, Das Wunderkind. Alex, did I say that correctly? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still working on my German. I, you speak way better English than I do German. So uh, just wanted to start out with you here. You, of course, debuted in 1991. Uh, you had a lot of – you wrestled your first match at 16 years old. Just talk about what it was like being trained uh, by your father, Steve Wright, and uh, debuting at a young age. Well, it was a very tough time being trained by my dad because of, he's really stiff <laughs> <laughs> and he takes a no not for an answer. So uh, it was a hard time, but um, I always wanted to be a wrestler and uh, I, I didn't have a problem with that kind of training. I mean, I'm I'm a second generation wrestler, which means if my dad wrestled all over the world uh, internationally, very successful for 26 years. Uh, my uncle Bernard Wright wrestled also many, many years, uh, internationally successful, and the uh, trainer of my dad, which was like his dad, um, he was a promoter, wrestler, and uh, he also had a wrestling school, trained also the British Bulldogs, um, so, you know, being, or coming from a, from one of the few European wrestling families uh, here, I had no problem with that kind of training, you know, I enjoyed it, you know, I mean, by the way, I Aside of, uh, I, I started training pro wrestling at the age of three because I was on the road with my dad and you know traveling around. I always watched the shows and the best playground at that time was for me the the, the ring. And um, so I, I kind of I didn't realize it's training what my dad did. You know, it was kind of playing around and stuff like that. Yes, and uh, with sixteen, I had my first pro wrestling match. Um, yeah, it was was tough because I was the youngest wrestler uh, wrestler at that time in Europe, and yeah, it was hard because everybody expected a lot from me because of the name Wright. You know, my father uh, has a very good reputation in that sport and uh, good name, and you know, all the colleagues watched my match, the promoters watched my match, and of course, all the fans. You know, so I, there was a lot of pressure on me, but it was fun. Uh, I trained. Very hard for that day. In, in 1994, you wind up in uh, WCW uh, and you de debuted as uh, you know Alex Wright, Dolph Wunderkin, which is you know German literally for Wonder Child. Uh, just talk about what it was like uh, debut. How did you wind up in WCW from uh, from Germany? How did that come about? Well, like I said before, I was uh, the youngest wrestler in, G in Germany or in Europe, and uh, I got a lot of media attention. I did a lot of interviews. Uh, radio stations and, and TV and I was invited to a TV show which called the Shrine and Marcus Live and that was one of the most famous talk shows in Germany at that time um, at that time also WCW run a German tour and uh, the wrestlers Johnny McBad and Sting were all also invited to that talk show and backstage I met those two guys and uh, I also met the PR manager from the and they invited me to their uh, WCW uh, event in Munich and of course I said yes sure um, thank you very much and uh, my dad told me hey listen kids you never know what's going to happen take your wrestling gear with you which I did and then uh, WCW guy got hurt uh, and they offered me the chance to have a match that night in Munich and after the match Ric Flair approached me and said hey listen kids we, we really like your uh, what you showed us, uh, if I want to sh finish the, the tour, the German tour, the last few days for them. And on the last day, they flew Eric Bischoff in uh, without me knowing, and uh, he also watched my matches. And um, after the match, Rick and Eric uh, said, hey, kid, we are interested in you. We want to offer you a contract. Yeah, and your, your, your big debut was at Starcade 94, 
Uh, actually, you wrestled uh, Triple H, I believe, uh, Jean Paul Levesque at the time. What was yeah. it like going into your first match? In and in in you'd had some some warm up matches on TV before that, but going into the big Starcade, that was Hulk Hogan w had just come aboard. Just talk about what it was like uh, in '94 going into that big Starcade. Well, you know, at the time I was like just 18 or 19 years old, and um, it's a lot of pressure because first of all, I, I don't want I don't want to let my father down. You know, uh, I want to bring 180 percent for my fans or at that moment for the WCW fans. Uh, I want to prove myself in front of the promoter and also in front of my colleagues. And uh, I knew there's millions watching this pay-per-view, and especially us two new guys, uh, Paul and me, and there was a lot, a lot of pressure, and I was very, very nervous. But, you know, after I went through the curtain, uh, then I wasn't nervous at, uh, <laughs> at that moment anymore. It just was fun then. Oh, yeah, and there was a... I mean, and you debuted, you had... Uh, you came in. You were obviously a baby face. You came in. You did a backflip from the from the ropes and 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 had the dancing. You did the dancing. How did that come about? How did you come up with uh, doing the dancing and doing the backflip? Well, in, in, at that time in Germany, before I went to the states, uh, techno was really really big. And uh, when I went to the dance clubs and stuff, I really enjoyed that kind of music. And of course, I danced to that kind of music. And somehow in the states, I went to some club and. One of the office guys saw me, you know, and he said, hey, why don't you do it on TV? <laughs> so, and that's how, oh. how I got stuck with my dance on TV. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to do it on TV, but, you know, <laughs> on one hand, it made me really famous, but uh, on the other hand, you know, I had problems with some kind of fans, which, because they didn't look past the dancing, you know, they, they, they didn't see my wrestling abilities. Well, you were an extremely polished technical wrestler, and uh, I, I, I recently just came upon a match of you and Ric Flair from a WCW Saturday night. To just talk about it, what it was like being able to actually work in the ring with uh, the legend like Ric Flair. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, Rick, Rick is a great guy, great friend. Uh, I had a lot of fun with him, and I learned definitely many, many things from him in the ring. It was unbelievable. I enjoyed working with those guys so much because as a young kid, uh, what I was at that time, um, there can't be anything better to step in the ring with uh, those kind of veterans, you know. You always learn something from them. If, if it was Rick or Arn Anderson or, you know, all those guys. Uh, when you came over to WCW, did they try, or did you guys have a meeting about different kind of gimmicks and then you just decided on, I'm just going to be Alex Wright? Well, since my dad had a very good name in that uh, sport, they kept my name because I was a second generation wrestler. And on, then the next thing is, well, I was the youngest guy. I mean, most of the guys were 30 or mid 30s and I was 18, you know, so the wonder kid uh, is the closest what you can get, you know, at that point. And uh, I guess they, they thought I'm not bad looking. So, you know, they put me in a pretty boy image for, you know, to, uh, to, to um, how do you say in, in English again? I'm sorry, I haven't talked English for a while. Um, you know, for, for the girlies and for the grandmas. And yeah, the yeah, <laughs> I, know, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> but that's uh, that's kind of one hand. But I'll tell you what, Alex, I mean, and in, in in, in, in by 97, I mean, you'd won a Cruiserweight Championship, uh, defeating Chris Jericho. And I mean, what what was it like, you know, just winning WCW Gold, being recognized, you know, by the company as a guy that could, uh, you know, have a belt and uh, be successful? Well, it's great. It's a great feeling because it's kind of saying thank you to you and to your hard work, what you do for the company. Um, um, well, it's, it's just uh, unbelievable because I was still young at that age. I mean, like 25 or 26, you know, and, uh, and um, I, it was a very hard time getting established in, in WCW because I was only 18 years old when I came over. Plus, I was uh, a foreigner, German. Uh, not only a foreigner, also a German foreigner. So I had a hard time at the beginning, you know. Um, but uh, after, you know, nine months, uh, my colleagues saw, yeah, I always want to give my best. I work good matches. I train hard. I'm respectful. And then it was just fun, you know. I got along with most of the guys in the locker room and with the office also. And uh, 97, like you said, I... I I won the belt, and uh, that was great, you know. Uh, 
when the NWO uh, storyline arrived, uh, do you feel like you didn't get enough play or enough match time or enough uh, publicity if you're not in the NWO, WCW kind of rivalry storyline? No, uh, actually that's the truth. You, you didn't get uh, much, much featured because of the NWO storyline if you're not in the NWO storyline. But I didn't want to be in that angle because there were too many old stars, you know, too many, um, you know, egos. I, it wouldn't be a good story for me. I didn't see myself being in the NWO because I'm not a group guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I do my own stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're, and your style, just being more of a technical wrestler, I mean, they were going, obviously, for ratings. I mean... Give us your thoughts on, you know, you talked about some of the older stars like Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash. I mean, give us your thoughts on those guys because, I mean, they were really good for business, but do you feel like they held held down guys like you, Chris Jericho, you know, Ultimo Dragon and people like that? Well, I don't know if they held us down purposely, but um, sure, they, they took away from the younger guys, you know. I mean, uh, in WCW, the big mistake was that they didn't feature younger guys. You know, I mean, younger guys is, uh, are the future for, of the sport, and if you never build up the, the young guys, then you know the, the sport will will die, or, or the company like WCW. In, in 1998, you find yourself uh, in a tag team, winning the tag team championships actually with Disco Inferno. I mean, what what were your thoughts on that? Were you were you and Disco friends? Did you feel like that was a good uh, good direction? Well, yeah, Disco and I were friends, and. Um, it was fun being in attack with him because he's a very entertaining person, very fun uh, person, and uh, also a great worker and great entertainer. Um, but still, I I rather wanted to be a singles wrestler because um, I don't want to share my spotlight with somebody else. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I just um, no, I, you know, I, I just like being a singles uh, wrestler. I just like that more. Plus, I didn't like the idea with Boogie Nights and stuff like that because <laughs> and my my dad, you know, is old school. And he he learned the business old school to me, and I like the old school stuff. And I my focus is more on the on the wrestling and the sport instead of all the entertaining. I mean, nowadays you have to be in those days also you have to be a great entertainer and a great wrestler. But like I said before, the dancing always gave me a hard time with the hardcore fans that they look past the dancing and just look at my wrestling uh, abilities. In 1999, you debut the uh, character Berlin, and you were supposed to be uh, debuting against Buff Bagwell, and he was supposed to lose, but apparently he didn't want to take the loss, and you guys kind of started a feud. Can you talk about that? Uh, that's long, long time ago. I mean, that was a hard time at that time because uh, Eric Bischoff was... Uh, yeah, still there, but uh, and the restructuring began with Vince Russo coming in, and nobody really knew who who was going to be the boss, and the backstage morale was uh, really bad, and the wrestlers didn't know what if they still have a job in the next few weeks, and um, I really can't call, uh, recall how it really happened. I just know that every every wrestler tried to um, well secure his own spot sure so I didn't know if this was a, a mistake of the management how they brought it to Bagwell or what happened there you know um, I really really can't recall do, do, what did you think of the Berlin character was that something you were comfortable with I mean you turned heel and you had to kind of be uh, you were a guy that, and your character refused to speak English you had an interpreter and uh, and then the Columbine shootings happened and you were wearing a trench coat and they no went, actually we're, we're the Columbine shooting happened before, and that's why the the yeah. view of the gift was postponed. And uh, actually, the Columbine shooting those guys uh, looked different than what the gimmick looks. But it was a, a little similar, how do you say, similarity. Yeah. And that I WCW decided to post the gimmick, which was good. Um, but of, of course, I felt uh, comfortable with that gimmick uh, because it was my idea, Berlin. You know, I, I, I talked to them, I said, I want to go away from that pretty boy image, I want to do something totally different, and um, it worked. I mean, it was a old school vampire uh, gothic gimmick, you know, and uh, being German, of course, 
I just talk German, you know, let's keep it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, people really enjoyed that game. It had a lot, a lot of potential. Too bad it's, you know, got dropped by the by Wim Russo. Right, and I was going to ask you about that because uh, it seems like about that time, 99 into 2000, when Vince Russo came in, that things just really kind of fell apart for the company. I mean, how, how do you feel about Vince Russo? Do you and, and do you think that that was just a really a really bad time for the company, and that's maybe why it wound up closing in 2001? Yeah, you said it. Uh, Vince Russo, in, in my eyes, Vince Russo is the reason why WCW closed down. You know, he, he, because he tried to bring a product, a w, WWE product, to uh, a WCW fan base, but we had a totally different fan base. It didn't work, and that's why we lost all the fans. You know, and that was that was a really bad time. Like I said before, uh, nobody knew who's the boss and blah, 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 blah. And Vince Russo came in, he didn't like any ideas what Eric brought in. And since I debuted under Eric, uh, that's why, you know, Berlin got dropped. Uh, there was supposed to be a heavyweight title match between Hulk Hogan and Jeff Jarrett, and then Vince Russo comes in the ring and does kind of a shoot interview saying he doesn't like the politics in the back by Hogan and Hogan will be ne never be seen again. And then he schedules the match with Jeff Jarrett and Booker T and then goes into the new blood. What did you think about that angle? Did you like that he was trying to get the wrestlers, the younger wrestlers, more publicity and more known? Uh, he didn't get the younger wrestlers um, more known. First of all, I don't think uh, stuff like that sh should be on the public. And second of all, he shouldn't talk about backstage politics. <laughs> exactly. Um, because if, if you know, he he killed WCW. Uh, because if you give a, if an actor the heavyweight belt, you know that kills everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I really don't have to say anything more about him. <laughs> yeah. That. So I mean, when WCW closed in in, in two thousand one. Uh, what what was you know you subsequently retired for a while after that? Was there ever talks? Did you ever try to maybe get in contact uh, with Vince McMahon to go to WWE, or was that never an option for you? Well, the thing is, um, I, I was uh, directly under contract with Time Warner, so they couldn't buy my contract, and I didn't want to uh, you know lose all the money, so I set out my contract. But I, I since I was one of the guys like uh, in WCW. That, is, that was straight for nine years with WCW, you know, being on the road sometimes 350 days a year and doing like seven matches a day sometimes. Uh, I was really um, physically burned out and also mentally. And uh, I needed a break, you know, and then that, that's why I went back to Germany, back to my roots, seeing my family, which I haven't seen in a, all of those years that much. And... Um, WWE approached me twice and we talked, but I'm I'm a kind of guy when I step in the ring I want to give 180 percent for the fans and for the for the promoter and, and for myself and I knew I couldn't do that at that point so I said thank you very much thank you for that great offer but uh, I can't do it and I and I kind of want to go back you know briefly because you know we're talking about your style and and I think it's one of the most unique styles that I saw at the time I mean. I was younger, I was probably, you know, 10, 10, 11 years old when you had first emerged on the scene, but now looking back, you had such a unique style, you are technically proficient, uh, you wrestled Arn Anderson for the television title uh, back in, I believe, 1996 or 95. Yeah. Talk about what it was like working with a guy like him, because I know you loved working with Flair, and I'm sure, you know, Arn was a good friend of Flair, so I'm sure that you probably enjoyed it. Oh yeah, that. it was great, I mean, it was like a walk in the park, I mean, it was just fun, you know, how it should be, and... I, I worked many times on, I worked many times uh, uh, Rick, and uh, every time I stepped in the ring with them, I learned something new. So it's the best thing what could happen to a young wrestler like me at that time. And I want to, now let's fast forward. Of course, you were back in Germany, and in 2009, uh, you started your own a company called New, Euro new European Championship Wrestling, that's NEW. Uh, just talk about how that came about and uh, you know how, how you're enjoying doing that these days. Well, well, the first, you know, my first dream always was to uh, follow my father in his footsteps and uh, become a wrestler, which I did and go to the States, which I also did, and uh, that was the best time of my life being in the States, living in the States, because I really uh, enjoy the country and the people there, and um, then when I was burned out and 
mentally and then physically, I said, well, I, I go back and I try to fulfill my second dream, which was to help uh, the sport in Germany and Europe to survive and uh, train young young uh, uh, people uh, to become pro wrestlers and give them a good professional training. 2000, uh, at the end of 2006, I opened my wrestling school, The Right Stuff, here in Nuremberg. Uh, I'm running this now for six years and I'm booked out for months. I have very, very a uh, lot, lot of um, a lot of students and very talented students. And like three years into that opening the wrestling school, I said to myself, man, there's so many good talents. They they need a, a, a good place where they can start and they can develop and uh, they they can make their experiences. So I. Um, uh, opened or founded uh, New European Championship Wrestling, which is a regular uh, promotion. Uh, we have international stars and also former students of mine. I mean, if, if there's a good young students of mine, why shouldn't I give him a break in the sport? And um, now we are the promotion in Germany and Europe. We are uh, having every month a show, uh, three big shows. We had a very big hardcore event and uh, we just uh, last Saturday we had High Explosive 2 which was sold out with a steel cage and um, our fan base is growing we have top names and um, yeah it's, it's really fun seeing this grow in Germany Oh well Alex it's been great talking with you I tell you what it's great that you're still over there still uh, still being in the business and training new guys and we look forward to keeping up with you on we, we always follow you follow you guys on Facebook so we'll keep doing that and uh, I'll tell you what you're a great spokesman for the sport and uh, for wrestling in general so we want to thank you for being on today and uh, we will continue to follow you and we will catch up in the near future my man sure thank you very much for having me thank you Alex have a good one you too bye take care